Good evening. My name is Toby Hecht, and I am the director of Shop Die based in New Haven. I will start tonight by thanking God for giving us the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Simcha Rothman, Lior Dakar, Aluf, and Ariel, for flying in from Israel to speak in New Haven, New York, and D.C. Thank you, David Sheckman, Megan, Laura, and the whole Meridian team for hosting tonight's event. And lastly, I want to personally thank everyone here for coming out tonight to engage in this critical and timely conversation. Can you hear me back there? Because it's, okay, good, okay. Last night, as around 140 students packed into the Anderson Mansion in New Haven at Yale University, in search of answers and honest and respectful discourse, a couple of us were corking wine and discussing the matter of nature versus nurture when it comes to the matter of curiosity and discourse. It was brief and unresolved. But as I was reading the Torah portion of B'Shalach this week, I found a fascinating take and insight on this exact topic. The Exodus experience from Egypt continues in B'Shalach with the birth of a liberated Jewish nation through the supernatural miracle of Kriyas Yamsuf, the splitting of the Red Sea. And yet, although this event and the story of Exodus is something the Jewish people speak about, pray about, think intentionally about every day, and celebrate every year in detail, within three days of singing God's praises for the truly awesome miracle, this young and thankful people become upset with Moshe because they have come across water to drink, but it is bitter. And this is the pattern of the post-Exodus experience. There are these enormous highs beginning with the plagues and this uh, incredible miracle of the splitting of the sea and the oft aftershocks of the sweetened water, the manna from heaven, the clouds of glory, Sinai, the giving of the Torah. And standing here tonight, it's hard to understand what on earth they ever complained about, having witnessed miracle after miracle. But as Adin Steinsaltz, Rav Adin Steinsaltz suggests in an essay I was reading, that when things are that accessible, they become expected, rote, and status quo, somewhat insignificant to the day-to-day -day grind, like water, food, safety, and security. It seems ungrateful, but it's natural to move on and somewhat disassociate from previous experiences in order to go forward in life that continually puts obstacles in our path. We do this routine every day in micro and macro fashion. It seems ungrateful and short-sighted, and perhaps in hindsight, it is. But we live in the present. So how do we resolve this or solve this age-old dilemma that our natural responses to life yet seem or are seen as argumentative, perhaps self-serving, even protective? So God wasn't looking for a placid, passive, or subdued people to give the Torah to. And after all, the Jewish people are a stubborn people who invented debate. And arguing, engaging, questions is the natural outcome of a thinking mind. But there's a caveat to this deal, or this ideal. At Mara, when the Jewish people complained about the water, the text reads, Visham Nisahu, and he tested them. Who tested them? God was testing the Jewish people to see how they would speak to Moshe about their concerns. What was their tone? Shalom nimlechu b'Moshe b'lashon yafeh. Please ask for water for us to drink. Instead, they complained. Argue, debate, engage, yes, with respect, with dignity, with love, with compassion, appreciation, inclusion. And the only way this can work itself into the nature of a people with different perspectives and ideas is ultimately by understanding the true nature of who we are, that each of us is a chelak elokai mimal mamish, an actual portion of the divine itself. And naturally what follows is that ki'ish echad belief echad, one heart with one soul. And once we nurture the godly side internally and recognize that same quality in each other, then our different natures will not be so different. It is hard, but all it really requires is, uh, is choosing to do so. That choice defines our freedom as human beings, and that choice, one by one, will change the world. The hero of this week's Torah portion, who does not, um, who does just that, is not even mentioned in the text. But I 
I, I can guarantee you that every child coming home from school tomorrow on Erev Shabbat will talk about Nachshon ben Aminadav. When the Jewish people stood terrified and cornered by their enemies on the banks of the Red Sea, God tells Moshe to tell the Jewish people to go forward into the sea. And there are multiple sources in the Talmud and other commentary that describe how arguing and fighting erupted about what to do among the people. When suddenly, Nachshon ben Aminadab from the tribe of Judah took initiative and simply jumped into the sea. The, uh, that split, followed by his tribe and the Jewish people to the other side of freedom. So, ladies and gentlemen, in these difficult times that challenge our convictions, our perspectives, our dreams, and our realities, we must look into our past, into our holy text, that can instruct us on the path forward with faith, with emes, which means truth, with questions, with discourse, and always with love for one another. Thank you so much. I'd like to introduce David to come and introduce you.